Epi and her adult son hadn't seen eye to eye ever since his youth. But after years of ex study, Epi realized that it was her anger and her, her temper and everything else that had caused this rift between her son and herself. I mean, there was more, but this was played a big role. It was her anger. But they had this relationship, a karmic one, and and Epi explained it very nicely. She said, we write our own script, and then we direct and star in our own play. In other words, we make our own trouble. Now this, she was referring back now to 10 years before when she had worked a job, a night job. She'd get off in the morning at six o'clock, jump in the car, go home, pick up her son because they, there was only one car between them, jump in the car, take off, drop him off at work. Well, on this particular day on their drive to work, they got into words and tempers became heated so that by the time they got there, he jumped out of the car, slammed the door, and walked off without even looking back. Now, it felt as if, Epi said, as if she had been, you know, stabbed in the heart, and she was deeply hurt. And so she drives along, and she's looking for a place She's looking for a place where she can pull over because she couldn't breathe. Her, her chest was so tight and her arm was hurting her and these weren't good signs and she was very concerned. And off in a strip mall that's coming down the road, there's a pink light. It, it's a pink neon light of some kind. And she says, oh, that'd be a good place to pull in. She pulls in. Now, as she had been driving by herself, she got this nudge, you know, so that she could have companionship and heal her broken heart and things like that. She ought to have a puppy or a kitten. So as she pulls into the um, driveway of this mall, of the strip mall, goes in there, looks, and this pink neon sign is for a pet shop. Okay, it's a nice coincidence. And she looks and she says, whoa, you know, a pet shop, okay. And she expects it to be closed before, because it's before seven yet. Nobody opens at seven. But she goes up to the door and it says, the little sign says open. She says, okay. Opens the door, walks in, the little bells tinkle on the door to let the owner knows somebody's come in. So Epi calls back there, you know, in her woman's voice, just to let everybody know back there that it's nothing to worry about. It's a customer. Come early. And here a very nice woman comes out of the back somewhere. And she comes up and she says, um, this was the first day of business. She was opening early because she couldn't sleep last. She couldn't sleep last night. And so if it was okay with Epi, if she needed any help, just call. And she'd be in the back room and she'd be right up. So Epi said, fine. So she looks around for kittens, no kittens. So she looks around for a puppy, one puppy, but the puppy is sleeping. And Epi is a kind heart, so she doesn't want to wake the poor little thing because it's too early. And so she looks around and she sees in the room this big table. It's the size of a large door on end. And in the middle of it, there is a piece of driftwood. And on this table, there are 25 to 30 little birds just hopping around and all this. 
And on this piece of driftwood on top is a, cock, is a uh, cockatiel, and that's a small parrot, and his mate, they're both up there. The male looks at Epi, studies her very carefully, and then he starts walking along this piece of driftwood, and he keeps his eye on her, never takes his eye off her. He's taken her measure, yes, indeed. Mm -hmm. Got some kind of psychological problem here, I believe. <laughs> And so he comes close and then he stops and he picks up a twig that was about the length of a little finger and he, and he does this cute little somersault. You know, birds are cute like that. <laughs> he does this cute little somersault and then upside down he takes the twig out of his beak puts it in his one claw and he holds it up to her because it's sort of a, it's sort of a gift of peace, a gift of love. And Epi very carefully takes this little twig of peace because it's Peace, you know. And then as she took the twig, the cockatiel, the male, jumps on her hand and begins walking up her. And the mate of the cockatiel walks up. And so there were other birds on the table and some of those came you know, birds of a feather and those not of a feather, they all got in line and they started walking up <laughs> Epi's arm. And then the male comes up finally and he's right underneath her throat here. He was making room for all the others, you know, so they could get up get aboard. And in the meantime, I believe some of the others must have migrated over to the right side of Epi. So she's standing here looking like a bird stand, she says. <laughs> and all of a sudden she hears this gasp behind her just after she had read this sign on the table that says, please do not take bird off the table. <laughs> She's looking like a bird rack. She'd been standing there trying to shake him off gently onto the table before she heard this gasp and they wouldn't go. They just hung on. Birds of a feather and not of a feather all together, they all hung on. And the owner said, my God, how did you do that? And Epi says, in a way, you know, weren't me, Sheriff, they did it. <laughs> the owner says, well, how are you going to get them off? <laughs> Some have never been handled. No, but they handled Epi very nicely. <laughs> so Epi, in answer, she leans down, she put her left hand on the table, the leader stepped off, and all the little birds of a feather on the left side, they, and those also not of the same feather, they got off on the left side, and also all the birds on the right side got off when she put her right hand down on the table. And so Epi knew that this was the Mahanta's way to heal her broken heart. Her heart was wide open now, and she felt such gratitude. And so Epi said 
you know, called to the owner. The owner came up and she thanked her very much for having let her look at all her little animals there. And then she left, went home. And as soon as she got home, the phone was ringing, picks it up. It's her son. Her son's apologizing. Epi said, you had already been forgiven. Because she knew that when her heart was broken, there was no room. And there was no room in her heart for sadness, for hurt, just love, a heart full of love.